Hey everyone, if you'll allow me five minutes of your time, then I'd like to tell you the sad, but potentially happy ending story of data on the environment. Come with me on the journey through time and space, from the 1800s to a not so distant future in the 2050s, so we can explore a new pathway to shared environmental data. When scientists talk about their exploration of our environment, they tend to present seriously dull statistics that just do not capture people's interests. What's even worse is that these geospatial statistics have remained essentially inaccessible because of the restrictive data policies that institutions and administrations place on them, or because of prohibitive costs. Indeed, what most people, including decision makers, would rather see are stimulating and exciting customizable maps and graphs that can raise both their interest and understanding of the complex environmental issues at stake. New information technologies and standards of open access based on modern spatial data infrastructures, SDI, have the potential to radically transform the current situation. But first, let's go back to the 1800s. to a time when scientists began to systematically observe the environment with some basic instruments, so that they could improve our knowledge about the world and translate that knowledge into maps. In those early days, traditional forms of knowledge drove our decisions on how to use natural resources and the environment. With the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, Innovation and emerging technologies brought a host of new ideas and promise. At the same time, our capacity to observe the environment was reinforced by growing scientific disciplines such as chemistry and ecology. A more systematic monitoring of the environment became possible that started to be applied unequally through space and time. In the 1950s, the emergence of modern sciences, together with energy provided by fossil fuels, significantly increased the impact of humankind on our environment. In fact, the overall effect of cheap oil could be seen to have disconnected people and decision makers from the environmental realities and natural resource limits within which we live. But at the same time, the increased capacities of mankind made it possible to send people and satellites into space. For the first time, we were able to observe our planet from space, which should have been enough to realize the true limits of the planet on which we lived. As barrels of oil spread across the world, they started to influence almost all decisions. The great ideas and dreams that we have had after the Second World War were increasingly transformed into some kind of nightmare. In the meantime, Earth observation made great progress and our observation systems are now even connecting to the internet. However, these great bodies of observation and knowledge on the environment remain largely unknown and ignored by the public and decision makers, either because they are not interested or because the data is inaccessible. So we live in a world with a huge amount of information on the environment, but a development pattern that is not taking this depth of knowledge into account. So most of the valuable information coming from Earth observation is sent to the trash can. and policy making remains sadly disconnected from observational sciences. In this context, data sharing through web services brings new opportunities to reconnect data with users. Data sharing contributes to new international efforts such as GEOS and INSPIRE to bring environmental data into the hands of users. The Global Earth Observation System of Systems is a global initiative based on countries and organizations who volunteer to release their environmental data 
at the lowest possible cost and as fast as possible. The data made available can be found and visualized on the GEO data portal and then manipulated through a variety of decision support applications. At a European level, the INSPIRE Directive legally binds member states to provide spatial and statistical information on the environment according to strict data models that are currently under development. These important international initiatives are built on the spatial data infrastructures that facilitate spatial data and metadata sharing through web services. Hold on, we've come to the most complex part of the presentation. In order to connect data providers with data users, Special Data Infrastructures, or SDIs, use web services for vector and raster data. First, data providers create and publish metadata, a standardized description of the data, and data itself. The important web services encountered here are named WMS, WCS, or WFS. We'll find out what they stand for on the next slide. Then, Data users discover the published data in the metadata catalog in order to finally access the data itself through web services that feed into several types of clients, such as personal computer and internet web mapping applications, or mobile devices such as cell phones and tablets. The standards most used for web applications are WMS for image services, WCS for gridded data services, and WFS for vector data services. Let's look at WMS image services in more detail with an example from the preview project on natural risks. Let's focus on Australia to explore the WMS services published by preview with a simple internet address to share customized maps as images for flooding hazards, forest fire hazards and cyclone hazards. WMSs are great for accessing an image of the data. But when we really want to retrieve the data itself, we need to use either WCS for raster data or WFS for vector data. Furthermore, WFS and WCS can be used as input data in so-called web processing services, WPS. These are processes defined on the internet server to process input data and produce on-the-fly new results for instance as new web services. By connecting data with users and contributing to international initiatives through web services, SDI built on open standards can help bridge the gap between policy and science. SDI can also help integrate knowledge from different disciplines in order to create more scientifically based decision processes. The challenge is to move from scattered, unused and expensive databases to distributed, accessible and standardised web services. Let's see, for instance, what happens when a user asks to the Water Information System for Europe, WISE, what's the water quality of European rivers? WISE is based on SDI technology and connects up national databases to provide information at the European level in a standardised way. WISE queries the SDI and publishes a map on its data portal to answer the question. The same thing happens when a user asks the Biodiversity Information System for Europe, BIES, where are the natural reserves in Europe? The answer to this question is also generated as a map on the BIES data portal. With these two examples, we see how SDIs help in answering specific end-user questions through retrieving on-demand persuasive maps with up-to-date information. This represents a much more efficient way of spending public money, especially in a time of repeated national debt crises.
Whys and bys show how the same data can be shared by different systems for different purposes using web service interfaces and open standards for information exchange. The idea is to create each dataset once and reuse it as many times as possible. Indeed, publicly funded data should be made publicly available using open data standards, but at the moment existing data is often scattered and restricted within political administrative boundaries. However, what we really need in order to improve our decision-making systems on the environment are publicly available, quality-controlled and spatially explicit information. What's going to happen in the near future? We believe that mankind needs to reconcile Earth observation with its activities and therefore with its decision-making processes. For a more sustainable future, we need to make better use of our knowledge. We need searchable and easily accessible data on our environment to favour a more democratic understanding of the complex environmental and societal issues. We want to be able to explore the past, the present and the future of our planet because we've only got one and as it belongs to nobody, it belongs to everybody. We still have a choice. Will we choose the wiser path? If we do, it might still be possible to aim at a more sustainable future for our generation and our children. To reach a more sustainable world, we need to work together and start taking the sharing and processing of crucial data on our environment seriously.